Davis, and I am a lawyer who has fallen in love with business through a journey that took me from Jamaica across to the United Kingdom to Bradford in the north of England and then back down to beautiful lush green Wales. And I'm here to tell you about how you can do your business your way. So what do I mean about that? Everybody, everybody has some uniqueness, some skill, some talent, some gift, which is theirs. It's quintessentially theirs, and it makes them their true, authentic self in the marketplace once they understand what that is. Guys, you've got this. You've got this. It's all in the mind. When we think business, we think, oh, well, yes. Okay, so I've got my business plan. I've got my figures. I know exactly what I want to earn. I want to know how much profit I would like to make. I have a product I'd like to sell. I'm going to get some brand experts in. I'm going to get a website done. I'm going to get you know, all sorts of wonderful things done. I'm going to have it all singing and all dancing and people are going to come flooding. But I'm here to tell you guys, that's not how it works. That's absolutely not how it works. If you are going to build your business the best way, you've got to do it by making yourself the most important part of your business, how you deliver your service, how you treat your staff, how you treat your customers. And that is by finding the uniqueness in you, making that your personal brand, translating it to your business brand, and using that to set you apart in the marketplace, to build your network, to increase your net worth. Now, it starts in the mind. Every day, there is a battle. There's a daily battle for your mind. Every morning you wake up, somebody, something, all sorts of things are battling for your mind. And who, who wins the battle takes the spoils. Now, I say to you now, guys, you've got to manage your minds. You've got to deal with negativity. You've got to deal with the things that were all the way back in our childhood, the things that Maybe our teachers said or parents said, uh, some of them well thinking, they're trying to protect you, but they are passing on their own limiting thoughts to them, to you, of themselves, to you. No, we can't do that. We have got to embrace, yes, our shortcomings, but we should not let our shortcomings shackle us. No, we have to embrace our strengths, I say, highlight your strengths. I say, focus as well on the basics. Yes, set small, short goals for yourselves and surround yourself with positive people. Yes, so yes, just as much as you need your business plan, a feasibility study, you need to know your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, your threats, you know, that sort of analysis. But first of all, the threats, the strengths, the weaknesses, and the opportunities start within you. And why that I'm talking about what I call your you print. We all have one of them. And we leave it behind whenever we meet people, wherever we go, whether by default or on purpose. So I always encourage people to leave a positive imprint wherever they go. So how do you control that? Well, how about asking people how they see you? How about uh, thinking about when was, what was the last thing somebody said about you when they invited you to do something and you thought to yourself, oh, I didn't realize I have that. That's what you're emanating. Now I'll tell you about how I came up with that. So like I said, I'm from Jamaica, but I am here now in the United Kingdom. Now that journey from Bradford to Wales was very interesting and very, very life-changing for me because I, when I joined the law firm in Wales as a head of property, I had to go out and network. I had to market the conveyancing department. And believe me, it was not easy because first of all, I couldn't speak Welsh. 
I didn't even know the names of the, the English towns that alone, they, 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 this, this, to pronounce the Welsh sounding words. I remember one day that I, I, I became the butt of, uh, of their jokes in the office, even though I was the one in charge, because I didn't understand what my staff member said to me, Bernie, you're, my train is stuck in mountain ash, I'm going to be late. I did not realize that that did not mean that we had a natural disaster of monumental proportions in Wales. <laughs> Mountain Ash was simply the name of a town. But when I said it out loud, I tell you they're still laughing. But I had to learn to laugh at myself. I had to learn to embrace all of who I was and be that authentic self in the marketplace. But within six months of maneuvering and networking in the marketplace, I became the darling of the media. I was invited to speak at the National Conveyance in Congress, not about um, how law, but how to network and market your conveyance department. If there was a change in any kind of law or regulation to do with property, I was the one that was invited to the media houses to discuss it. If there were, when there was a political change shift, you know, elections, I was the one invited with a group of experts to, to speak with the prime minister about various things of concern within our city. That had only just arrived. I, the, the, the local chamber of commerce was merging into a regional chamber of commerce at the time when I moved down, when other people were writing applications to uh, become council members. I was sent a letter to invite me. Now that's what I'm talking about. And then I had to ask myself, and other people asked me as well, What's this about you, Bernie? Why, why, why are people inviting you? And what, what's this about you? And I started to ask, and I started to pay attention. I started to listen, and I realized it was because as a black woman with a Jamaican accent in a male-dominated uh, marketplace, I was always, as you see me here, my nails all done, uh, bright and, and, and wacky, my lipstick, my colors. I was who I was. I was representing myself, my culture and my country, but not in an obnoxious way. I was just being me. Sometimes I laugh too loud, but then it's better to laugh. I cared about people. I was always interested in people as well as being interesting. I always thought, how can I help people? What can I do? If I was having a conversation with someone, I actually understood you know the whole principle of the six degrees of separation I understood that people are not necessarily what they do but it's where they're from we are some of our past we are what's incubating inside of us and we are for, for the future and we are where we are now please do not make the mistake of dismissing anyone out of hand in the marketplace because you have no idea who they know where they've been and where they're going. And the only way you'll find this out to be able to help you to build your business is to have conversations, to listen more than you speak. Because in listening, you learn. You learn, first of all, what's interesting to them, what their needs might be, and what value can be to them. Yes, because when you have a business, it's not just about, oh, I'm going to try to make money, but what's your business doing for them? What value, what problem are you solving in the marketplace is the question you need to ask yourself and to be able to answer to yourself before you start going out and about trying to push and sell your wares. Guys, it is so important. So I, I, I looked into myself and I thought, hang on a minute, if that's what I'm leaving behind, then I think I really need to own this. I really need to start to do, do it on purpose. You know, I was doing it first by default, but then I thought, no, I'm gonna do it on purpose. And it's not about being disingenuous, it's authentic. It is just simply owning that great bit of yourself and doing it more often and purposefully in the marketplace. So people begin to be create an impression of you based on that experience with you. And that becomes then your reputation and by extension, your brand. And then when you teach the people in your business and in your, 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 your teams to reflect that, it then develops into a business culture, guys. It is incredible, absolutely incredible, that discovery that I made. What it did for me is by the time I spent three years in the law firm, I left the practice of law and I went out and about teaching lawyers, 
local authorities, Johnson & Johnson, Sony, you name it, I trained at a very high level and I had sellout monthly training seminars teaching people how to network and market and build their business by being their authentic self, by leaving the best imprint. Now, you leave the best imprint not just by owning who you are, Yes, that's important because as I said, you are your best product and your business will not surpass your own limitations. But there's another thing we need to think about. We need to think about who are the people in our marketplace? Because in the same way we have our, our unique distinctives that set us apart and distinguish us and, and, and make us our credible and incredible selves, the people in the marketplace also do. You have to learn to therefore engage with them. There's an art to engagement. So ask yourself, I'm being, am I being a bull in a, in a China shop? In other words, am I just barging around, being unrepentantly myself, caring not at all for the people around? If you are doing that, then you've got the whole you print, the whole you uniqueness, the whole understanding who you are completely wrong because as important as it is to understand who you are, so it is more so important to understand who people are. So think about different personality types. You have the red personality types. I break them down in colors. You have the red personality types that are the ones that are go-getters. They're very quick. You can identify who they are because they are the ones who are going to be always, you know, asking you and interrupting you when you're speaking to them, asking you questions in the middle of you trying to tell them something. It's not that they are being rude, it's that they've already got you, they've bought you, they want you to close them, yes? And they're, you, and they're all about the bottom line, yes? They are competitive, they're strong. Then you have the green personality types, which they need, they're, 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 they're more relational. They need to understand uh, what's happening and they need to get a lot of information. Yes, guys. Then you have the blues, they're professionals, not that the greens and the reds aren't professional, but the blues are more, that would be your lawyers and, and your, your accountants. They really need everything professional and they need a lot of information. The greens as well. There's just a lot of overlapping between the blues and the greens. But the thing with the greens is that they don't like to be pushed into making decisions and they don't like to be pushed to say no. They don't like to say no. So they're the ones who will probably say to you, can, I, can you send me an email? Because they want to tell you no in by, by return of the email. Okay. Then you have the yellow personalities, the professional huggers. Oh, yes. So they're all over you. They're effusive. You know, you go and tell me, you are Bernie. As I've been told you so, like a bit of a red and a bit of a yellow. Yes, I am a bit. I'm a more like an orange. But what it is, is there are little indicators that you will get from the things that they will say that will tell you how to speak to them and how to relate to them. So, for example, somebody who's red, who's competitive and like to achieve and like money, if you're going to invite them somewhere, you've got to tell them, show them the money. <laughs> how are they going to make money going to this event or getting involved with this initiative? Where is the money? Where is the recognition? If that's not there, you're not going to get the reds. Okay? Now, the person who is the yellow or the green, you tell them about a charitable cause, something that would really help, you know, some people and uh, some, a place that they can engage with in a way that they'll feel good about themselves in, based on what they're doing. Yes. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. So this, is, this um, talk is not necessarily about going into detail, but really the essence of what I'm trying to say is as much as you need to understand who you are in the marketplace to build your business. You need to understand who the people are in your marketplace when you're building your business. And then what you need to do when you've done all of that, you need to think, okay, so I've done my feasibility study. I know what business I want. I know the why of my business. I know how I'm going to make that change within the marketplace by using my services. I know what I need to do to effect change and to get attention. And I know the problem I'm solving and I'm comfortable with it and I'm proud of it and I'm proud of how I'm executing my service, then that's what I call you finding your true north. You found your true north. You know where you're going. Let's go and let's do it. In doing so ever, unfortunately, guys, sometimes you might have to leave some people behind. 
Now, the ones that I suggest you leave behind very quickly are the naysayers, the ones who will tell you you can't do it, the ones who are always having the negative result before they even consider any possibility that it could go right. You will need to separate yourselves from them, the ones who are always comparing themselves with you and with others. You do not need that. You are responsible for your own well-being. You're responsible for what you take in. You're responsible for what you meditate on. You're responsible for the kind of service you give. You have to invest in yourself as well. Invest in yourself. The ROI on self-investment, uh, it's exponential. Yes, invest time read self-help books, get a mentor. Even if you're a coach or a mentor, every coach needs a coach, every mentor needs a mentor. So I suggest that you rarely take time to invest in yourself and tell you what? Here's an idea. How about thinking about others while you're doing all of that? It's not all about you. It's never all about you. Support others. It is always better to give than to receive. I remember when I moved over from the Jamaica to the United Kingdom in the year 2020 years ago, I came with great plans, but the plans fell through and I could not get a job. All I was hearing about is you're overqualified, overqualified, overqualified. So you know what I did? I didn't go back home with my tail between my legs. It was not an option. And I was not about to uh, you know, fall prey to depression and give up. I had my children watching. Listen, yes, there's, it's always good to have someone to know that somebody's watching you. So I had to be careful how I went at that time. But you know what happened as well? Without even realizing it, one of my U prints kicked in. And that's that I care about people. So while I was up in Bradford, I noticed that there were people around that were struggling. Refugees, asylum seekers, British people who were struggling with the um, the circumnavigating the social welfare system. So what did I do? I started a charity. I created a job for myself out of a need I saw. And do you know that that charity, three years later, landed me my most prestigious speaking engagement to date at the United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland. And that trip to deliver that talk was paid for by the city and county of Bradford. The flights, the accommodation, not just for me to go, but I had a nine-year-old daughter at the time. She pay, it paid for her to attend and a nanny with her. So I could deliver that talk. Now tell me now, guys, do you think I know what I'm talking about? Do you think I've earned the right to tell you about how to build your business your way? I think I have. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many other nuggets I could share with you. But I will leave you with that. And I will leave you with what I say in my bestseller, Your Business, Your Way, which was launched in 2020 in August. It is this. You are worth it. Invest in yourself. Work on your confidence, own who you are, never forget, never give up, and always keep moving. That's all I'd like to share with you. I'll just take you full circle to remind you that the single most important thing that you will ever do and the greatest gift or discovery that you will ever make is to find yourself. In finding yourself, you are then therefore able to, to create and deliver to the marketplace your authentic, amazing, incredible, and useful you print that becomes your legacy that lives beyond your time and your business. Thank you so much for listening.